In our video, The Five Stages of Learning to Draw People, we talked about how everyone starts at the symbol stage, where your drawings get distorted by preconceptions about how people look. Then the next stage was the analytical stage, where you learn to observe and draw what you see. So today, with the help of my wonderful wife, Lucy, we're gonna show how you can move from stage one, beginner, to stage two drawing. Yeah, because I'm a beginner at life drawing and I only really draw when he needs me for one of these videos. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, my name's Kenzo and this is Love Life Drawing. So first let's look at how the progression goes, then ways of practicing the four skills that you need. So this is how I used to think the learning process should go. I thought you start by learning to draw simply with gesture and maybe 3D shapes. Then you learn to build detail on top of that with better rendering and anatomy knowledge. But now I think that's more how an experienced artist does a detailed drawing, but it's not exactly how an artist goes through the learning process for drawing figures. Proper simplification is much harder than it looks for a beginner, so you need to get over this hump first to get to that point. So here, Lucy drew without any guidance from me and without using any particular techniques, just drawing. I would say this drawing is halfway up this hill because she's not just drawing symbols. The proportions are pretty good, but you can see a little bit of that tendency to straighten things out a bit, which is a classic symbol stage habit. So to get up here, you need to learn to draw maybe a slightly stiff, but fairly accurate figure. Worrying too much about proportions, overworking the drawing, correcting lots of mistakes, making a bit of a mess maybe, taking quite a long time. This drawing that she did with my guidance is more like one of these drawings at the top of this hump. This took way longer than the first drawing. We carefully worked through every single step of it together. She probably wouldn't be able to do this on her own, even though I showed her how to, but now she knows what she needs to practice to get there on her own. We're gonna look at the things that I was telling her to do later in this video. Eventually, you'll be confident enough to simplify back down, seeing what matters and leaving out what doesn't. So you have to learn to let go of detail and that's really hard as well. We're gonna cover all of that in another video. So once you've learned to simplify, you'll be able to draw detail and nuance on top of your simple foundation, which is a much better way of doing it. This beautiful drawing by Lane Brown has nuance built on top of simple gesture and structure. Or you can move further into the simple, stripping things back more and more, like this wonderful quick gesture by Richard Powell. Once you're over this hump, the world really is your oyster. Okay, so now we're gonna show the drawing process sped up. And I'm on the right hand side of the video. Yeah, and I'm on the left showing her everything that she needs to do. And I'm gonna do some narration to explain the skills that we were working on. You need to have specific goals for whatever your current stage of learning is, because just a general goal of, I wanna be good at drawing, it's such a big long-term goal. It can feel like you're failing all the time if that's your goal. Our goal here now is just to move up this part. And that means being able to draw a figure with proportions that are just natural enough that they're not distracting to the viewer. And that's a really different goal to perfect accuracy, but it's still quite difficult and it's still gonna take time to get here. So these are the four skills that we want to develop. Notice that doing a beautiful drawing is not one of our goals and that's totally fine because at this stage we're not really thinking much about gesture and simplification and composition skills yet. So first we need to learn to map out the figure's landmark. So I asked Lucy to start with the main volume of the cranium as a kind of ball shape and then look at the angle of this line on the neck muscle to get to the middle of the collarbones. From there, we measured the angle of this collarbone and also the line down through the middle of the chest to the top of the rib cage arch. So when you practice, you need to have the time and patience to do quite a bit of measuring of distances and angles. Hold up your pencil to the pose, check how far things are, what the angles are. You'll also benefit from seeing imaginary vertical and horizontal lines to see how things line up with each other. As you build the figure, 
Remember you're trying to move away from your symbols. Don't straighten out the pose or stretch out foreshortened parts. Use your measurements, use all this analysis to force yourself to see and draw the reality. And you end up being able to do this stuff automatically without having to measure everything eventually. So for this part of the process, you're gonna need to give yourself some time, you're gonna need some patience, right? Yeah, I think you need a lot of patience because it did take well over an hour to do the second drawing, whereas the first one took about 15 minutes, so it was a lot quicker. And I think at times I did get a little bit impatient with yeah, you. and me your, too. <laughs> we had some arguments. Yeah. But we got there in the but end. we got there in the end. Before we get to skill two, I wanted to mention that our Life of Drawing 10-week program will take you through a structured sequence of lessons guided drawings and practice sessions designed to build these exact skills and then move on to that simplification stage as well. Check it out at lovelifedrawing.com slash lifeofdrawing. Enrollment is open now until September 29th. If you're watching after that, go to lovelifedrawing.com slash lifeofdrawing to see if and when we're gonna run it again. So a lot of us are good at seeing that our drawing is somehow wrong, but the real skill is analyzing. Why is it wrong? Which part needs to move to make the basic proportions work? So here we notice that the armpit was above the line of this collarbone, but if we put it there, that would make this shoulder too thin. So I asked Lucy to take a moment and look for whether the collarbone was off or the top of the shoulder was too low, or maybe a combination of the two. So when we discovered that I'd done something wrong, I was in a real hurry to correct that line, for example, but having Kenzo there meant that I um, was reminded to slow down and investigate. Yeah, so sometimes when you notice something looks a bit wrong, you just wanna fix that thing, but sometimes things look a little bit off because the stuff around it is a little bit off, and you have to take a step back and check the bigger picture. Use a little hand mirror or take a photo of the drawing, and if you can, flip it horizontally. Next, you can also use the skills of measuring and checking vertical and horizontal lines again, but this time try to use different measurements and lines than you used when you first drew it. There's so much trial and error, you might use the eraser a lot. Here I kept reminding Lucy to keep her early lines light, but it's okay if yours gets messy. You're building the skill of seeing what's wrong and how to make it right. Line quality is a skill for the next learning phase, not this one. So don't pressure yourself on something that you're not focused on right now. Even if you've built up an area, if you realize it's wrong, redo it because nothing should be precious in the drawing. Seeing what's wrong is partly about analysis and partly just experience from doing lots of practice. So if you're not sure, don't worry, keep practicing you'll start to see it eventually. We can get past our symbol drawing by drawing the abstract shapes in the negative space and the abstract shapes in the shadows. You'll often find it easier to capture abstract shapes than if you're thinking about the figure itself. But you can't only see things all as abstract shapes. You also need to think about what they represent. So you sort of switch back and forth between seeing them as just these abstract shapes and then seeing them as meaningful for the figure. So here, as Lucy drew this abstract shape, I had to remind her that this part of it was created by the ribcage arch, so it should align with the arch that she had already drawn. She was also worried about the detail in the shadows, so I asked her to just merge them all into big, simple shapes. And then finally, you want to start the process of seeing the figure in terms of its big volumes. Eventually, it could be really useful to be able to see the figure in terms of simple 3D shapes like boxes and cylinders, which you may have seen other artists do, and I think that that's really useful too, but I do think it's something that comes a bit later because it's really not as easy as it looks. So for now, you could start to try to simplify the surface of the figure into planes that you see. So the surface of the figure is generally curved, but you can simplify some areas into planes, like this is facing this way, this is another plane facing that way, and then often the edge of the shadow shape helps you to define a line between those imaginary planes. 
And then some areas are really nicely curved and you can keep those as curved surfaces like they would be on a cylinder or on a sphere. But then others can be simplified, like I said, into these simpler planes. So learning to see these things is a great skill at this stage. So let's think about how your overall practice session should go. You do still need to try to do some quicker gestural drawings, I think, and, and also practice your basic fundamental forms, even at this stage. So you could warm up by drawing some cubes, drawing some cylinders and spheres, just get used to those. And also you could do some quick poses, trying to feel the gesture and the flow that you see in the pose. Just don't expect too many epiphanies and great results from those exercises yet. Just think of it as warm ups. You're just starting to get used to the ideas. And then in the future, when you really start to work on them, you're more ready for them because you've just been doing them a fair bit in your warm ups. Whatever you do, don't compare your gesture drawings to other people's because that's not really the thing that you're working on right now. Then in your main practice, do longer drawings, maybe 30 minutes or so. He, during those, remember your goals, which is to slowly build these four skills we talked about. It's not about achieving a great drawing, it's about practicing those skills. Once you do that quite a lot and you're really comfortable, that's when you can make more of a focus on simplification, on gestural skills. In a future video, I'm going to explain more about that part. So as I mentioned before, guys, our Life of Drawing program is one way you can navigate this learning process. So don't forget to go to lovelifedrawing.com slash lifeofdrawing if you're interested in our 10-week online life drawing program. There should be more videos somewhere on the screen, so check one of those out, and I'll see you next time. Bye.